Look at this timer on your screen right now. You see it counting down. Every second gets us closer to something. In my case, in your case, in this case, to a key point in this video where I'm showing you how to use timers generated inside of ProPresenter. So at my church, before we started using the timers feature, we had these countdown videos that we downloaded from online and we showed them pre-service. Then they worked fine, but ProPresenter timers have several benefits over these videos that either start on time or the service begins late. I'm also going to show you how to display a countdown timer on the stage display screen for the pastor or anybody else that's on stage. Hi, I'm Nathan. Welcome to Crazy Amazing Designs and the Garden. I should probably get you a little closer. So I've got ProPresenter up and inside of the interface in the very bottom right, you can see that there is the timer tab and then there are these three timer types. So the first type is the countdown type and below here, if I expand it, you can see some information about this timer type. Well, you can change the type, there's three types and you can change it to one of the other ones if you'd like, but we're currently just set to countdown timer. So we can set the duration here. So the countdown timer is gonna basically be from this duration time to zero, okay? And then you can allow overrun. And now I can go ahead and start it. So it's gonna start at an hour and 14, 15 minutes, and then it's gonna count down to zero. So let's go ahead and stop it. And actually I can pause it here and then I can restart it or I can pause it and then I can reset it back to the original time. So let's set this to zero seconds and then let's set this to like three seconds and then just gonna go ahead and click out of it. Cause if you don't, if you just like change it, but then click it, sometimes it doesn't reset right. So anyways, I'm set to three seconds. So yeah, it'll allow overrun and it'll show the overrun here in the timers section. So the next two sections are kind of the similar, kind of the same. So I'm gonna go to countdown two time is the second countdown timer type. So currently, um, this one is set to the time 9 p.m. So we use this one when we want to count down to a specific time. So it is currently 6.21 p.m. So let's change this to 6.30, click out of it, p.m. And now I can go ahead and start it and it's gonna give me the countdown to time. So we use this for our service countdown timers because it's really useful to be able to count down to the 9 a.m. service or to the 10.30 service. That way we don't have to start it perfectly on time we actually let this run for our during our entire production meeting so it's about 15 minutes it's usually up there so i'm gonna go ahead and stop it you can pause it but if you pause it and then restart it let's wait for a few more seconds to go by it'll pick back up yep so see it went all the way from 27 to 20 seconds cool i'll just minimize that and then the third timer type is the elapsed time and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set the start time and then we're gonna set the end time. So if I started here, uh, it's just basically gonna count up. And in, in this case, it's gonna count up to an hour and four minutes and 39 seconds. And then if you allow overrun, it will go over that. But if not, it'll stop there. So those are how you set up the timer types. Now, the next question is how do we actually use these timers inside a ProPresenter? So I just, tried to explain this, but it was really confusing. So I'm actually gonna clear all, and I'm gonna create a new entire presentation item called Countdown. And I'm gonna add that to this sample playlist. And there's already one called that Countdown Demo. So there's two ways to use timers inside a ProPresenter, realist, practically, right? We have timers that are shown to the audience and there's timers that, are, timers that are shown to the stage display for the band, for anybody on stage. So those are separate instances. Well, they're the same timer usually, but they're separate in terms of how we display them, okay? So to show a timer to our audience, so let's say we're gonna set up a five minute countdown timer. There's also a few ways to do that, right? So the one way would be to, let's go ahead and edit slide, and I'm going to make this text box a little smaller. And I'm just gonna put in the center of the slide. So we're basically gonna redo the, the countdown timers that we can get pre-built. So I am going to use the linked text feature to go to timers, countdown to time. And now I'm gonna make this all caps and I'm gonna scale this text up or down, okay? Now, back down in the link text section, I'm gonna remove the hours because we don't care about that when church is starting. We're gonna remove the milliseconds because we also don't care about that level of detail when church is starting. So now I've linked this to the countdown to time. So now 
if I go ahead and reset this, I'm going to set this to uh, back to 6.30 p.m., which is in about four minutes, and I'm going to reset it, and I'm going to start it. And now it's running, 3 minutes, 30 seconds. I'm going to click on this. It's going to show it up here, okay? So that's really cool. But now let's change a couple things. Let's duplicate this because this one, this count and do two time, is going to be for, let's go to label edit. And I'm going to make this one 6, um, 35 p.m. And that's just the slide label so that I can see when this slide is counting down to. And this one is going to be 6, 45 p.m. Okay, so now we have two options here. We could duplicate this countdown two time, or we could create a new countdown two time, and we could set it up one for 635, one for 645. I'm going to not do that, actually. I'm going to remove this countdown two time. I think this is the one that just made. I'm going to remove that one, and I'm going to opt into this other strategy. I'm going to right-click. I'm going to go to Add Action, Timer, Countdown to Time, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a couple things. So the Countdown to Time is selected, and I'm going to set it to Start, and then I'm going to Set Configuration. So the Set Configuration thing is how you make a timer unique to each slide. So I'm going to set this one to 6.35 p.m., and I'm not going to allow overrun. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one, add action, timer, countdown to time. And I'm going to set this to 6.45 p.m. And I'm going to enter it. Okay, so now the one down here currently has a minute and 24 seconds. So I'm going to click on this one. It's going to be 6 minutes and 21 seconds. And now it's actually going to change this down here because this is overriding what is happening down here. We're just using the countdown to time on this slide to trigger this. And now for the second service, wait, what happened to my label? 6.45 p.m. Oh, that's, that's, that's funky. 6.45 p.m. Okay, now there's my 6.35 and there's my 6.45. So an extra 10 minutes on the timer. Okay, so you can see in the bottom right, it changes it, changes it, changes it. So that is a good example of creating a timer to show on your audience screen for your service. So what we could do here, let's go down and find a nice motion background. Um, let's see. Sometimes when I do a screen recording, these don't show up properly, so it's really weird. Okay, we're just gonna assume these look good. It'll show up my output. So yeah, there's my two. So there's my first service, there's my second service. And I can also come in here and create like a shape fill. I can fill this black make it easier to read, and then I can lower the opacity to 70%. Do the same thing over here, fill, make the background black, lower the opacity to 70%. So there we go, now we have uh, the count, oh, that was literally a five minute countdown starting, that's hilarious, and then this will be the 15 minute. So just makes it a little bit easier to read, to see on the screen, and it looks really sharp. So timers are coming to here. Okay, so let's move on because uh, one more thing I want to show you. I want to use this timer, but I want to get rid of the background and I want to show it over top of the announcement loop. What we just set up cannot actually be triggered on top of the announcement looping slides. So instead, we're going to use a feature called props. And props are really cool. Props are graphics that can be uh, created and then triggered on and off. And this all happens on a layer above what you can see right here in the layer hierarchy of ProPresenter. It happens in a layer above the image and text layers. Now let's go and make that happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get down to props in the bottom right, and this is the props tab right here, and you can see it says props. So what props are is, uh, if I click on my name tag, Nathan, you can see that this little graphic comes up, and you can see that it comes up on this props layer right here, so I can clear the props. So what I'm gonna do is create a new prop. Props are basically like a graphic thing that comes up, goes on top of, it, of stuff. So that wasn't a very good explanation, but what we're gonna use it for is to put the timer over top of everything else, specifically the announcements that are looping. So I'm gonna, I just pasted, copied some text, service starts in, paste that in there, and I'm gonna right click on the prop and I'm going to open up the editor. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some text and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. 
I'm gonna make it a little smaller. I'm gonna do the scaling text up or down. I'm gonna make it all caps. I'm gonna go to linked text and I'm gonna link my countdown to time. And then I'm gonna remove the hours. I'm gonna remove the milliseconds. I am going to put it right here and I'm gonna duplicate it and right above it, I'm gonna put another another text box, but I'm gonna type in the text manually. I am not a graphic designer. You could literally make this look so much better in milliseconds if you just put some effort into it, really. Okay, service starts in. Let's add our shape. Let's add a fill and let's do that. And let's do the same thing to here. Let's just do that. It's not going to look good, but it is what it is. The point is, is this is being generated because there's a linked text countdown to time. So now if I put this over top, of the announcement slides as they loop you can see that we can still see the announcements but we can also see the service starts in timer so this is how we were doing it now we need to do it a little bit differently because we're using the prop okay so i can turn the prop on and it plays above the announcement slides so there we go yeah perfectly it perfectly plays above the announcement slides it looks really nice so i'm going to go and redo my slides here so i'm going to go ahead and well let's just keep those but we'll add two new slides add new blank slide add new blank slide okay we have two new slides this is going to be our 635 and 645 let's uh 635 is in one minute so i'm going to create a new add action i'm going to go to timers countdown to time and i'm going to make the new one 640 okay and then this one is going to be add action timer countdown to time six fifty. Uh, okay. So now on this one, let me just go ahead and label these. Edit. Six forty and six fifty. So now I'm going to add a action and it's going to trigger the prop. So the service starts in, it's going to trigger that prop to turn on and add action props service starts in. So now let me clear everything. Okay. We can see that the countdown to time is set. Uh, let's stop that and reset it just so that when I click on this, it truly shows what's going on. Service starts in it's that's set to 640. And if I go over here, this one's set to 650. Okay, you can see that they are indeed correct. They're triggering this service starts in. And now I can go ahead and put announcements over them, under them, really. Beautiful, I'm just clicking through the announcements. But you can get the idea that these are not really my announcement slides. But you can see, and now if I go over to countdown starts in, if I change it to the second service, I now have to go up here, and just, but restart the announcements, but how cool is that beautiful that's literally exactly what we were looking for and now i would recommend putting this on the lower third but what do you do okay um stage displays <laughs> it's a whole nother thing this slide back on cool so my announcements are underneath and my service starts in slide so now to set up a stage display and put the timer on it really what we need to do is go to edit layouts so this timer is running this timer is active now we just need to actually put it somewhere so i like to have a countdown timer and this countdown timer is for pre-service, post-service. You could also do, let's see, that one's for that. I, in my template here, I have a whole bunch of content created for ProPresenter, all the different stage display layouts I use. So if we go over to text, and we can set, it's already set to countdown to time, and hours and milliseconds are off. So now I can just go to show, and if I go over to my stage screen one, you can see here that stage screen one is currently set to full screen, which is why it's showing the same thing as my main output. Let's set it to countdown timer, and now you can see that it's showing the countdown timer. So let's go to the multi view. So service starts in on the main output and on the stream output, and then this on the stage display output. If you want to change what's going to the stream, we could use the macros that are set up to do that. Um, typically, I use the pre-service look. Well, it would change the stage, the not just the stage display, but that also. But yeah, so yeah, that's to pretty much how once you have content being generated inside of ProPresenter. So basically, once this timer is running from somewhere, and what's running it is the fact that we've selected it here, and once it's running, 
then we can basically use the different stage changes to determine what uh, what stage display layout is active. And once a specific stage display layout is active, that's when we get our uh, service, that's when we get our clock on the stage display. So that's pretty much that. Let me grab a sermon live text. So this is the sermon. So we use a count, the sermon we use a countdown. So if I set this for 30 seconds and I start it, you can see that, oh yeah, there it was. I just had to reset it for some reason. So there you go, it's set to 30 seconds and it's pulling from this countdown. So that's another advantage of just using one timer in ProPresenter instead of using a whole bunch of timers set up. We're just right clicking on these slides and we're adding timer actions to start timers versus trying to set them up a different way. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you like the garden, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Have a wonderful day. Bye. It's more about the content and the garden, but the garden's a pretty cool place to be.